If you took a, a, a ping pong ball and you put it in a bag for each year that human civilization has existed, uh, say going back 5,000 years, uh, the very first cosmological models in the Bible and ancient Egypt and, and Sumeria, and you wrote on it, what's your model of the universe? <laughs> like, is it eternal? Is it cyclical? Is there a turtle on top of a turtle? Is there a Ouroboros eating its tail? What is it? Just, just put it in there. The overwhelming number of ping pong balls would have a static eternal universe. Einstein believed in it. Newton believed in it. It's interesting. The Bible does not believe in it. The Bible has a creation event, right? Uh, there are Egyptian myths that have a creation event. But most models, uh, most people for all time believed that the universe was static. And in fact, the name that we Static get- Static meaning it exists, has always existed, exactly. and will always exist as it is. Exactly, right. 100% right. So, uh, and why do we know that? Well, we're sitting on this thing called a planet. I don't know if you know any Greek, my Greek's not that strong, but planet means wanderer. Well, why do we have a name? It's like Jews, we, we talk about people that aren't Jewish, we, we call them goyim, or we, you know, which just means nation, it's not like a put down or anything. Um, but that's interesting, because like we're only 0.2% of the population of the world, <laughs> right? So we're saying, we have a name for the 99, like, I just call them people, and like, yeah. we're the weird ones, right? But, but anyway, uh, so we have a name for these things that moved. They're called planets. Well, why were they special? Because they were the only things that moved. Mm. Everything else is static. It looks like it's unchanging. We know the stars move a little bit, but you couldn't perceive them over human lifetime. But the five planets that they could see back then, after which our days are named and so forth, there's deep inculcation of astronomy in our daily lives that we just take for granted. But, but anyway, um, those things move. And so it was natural to suspect, as Newton did, as Einstein did, um, that the universe was static and eternal. Uh, and that prevailed for an extremely long period, the preponderance of human history. And so we asked the question of what could overthrow that? Well, before, I would say the last decade, it was impossible to speculate any more than just purely qualitatively. But now with telescopes and tools like that of my team, uh, that my team and, and I are working on called the Simons Observatory and other competitor teams, we're looking potentially at a relic just like these water molecules reveal the fiery fusion conditions that were present in the first second after the Big Bang, we're able to go 30 orders of magnitude farther back in time. And we will reveal the presence via what are called gravitational waves. Those gravitational waves would originate from a quantum, a purely quantum phase of the universe's history called inflation. Okay, what, what does any of that mean? Okay. So the universe, the question is, did the universe come from what's called a singularity or not? Was there a point of infinite temperature, infinite density, infinite energy from which all the matter and energy that we're experiencing today came from, including the molecules in here, including every cell in our body, the matter of that. So forgive me, I'm just trying to make yeah. it simple enough that idiots like me can understand, <laughs> hopefully other people watching can understand as well. So the idea of the Big Bang is you have this matter that is, I'm, I'm using very stupid language, no, I'm fine. aware, but it's super condensed. Yeah, absolutely, that's correct. And then it explodes and cools over time, and that's how you get the universe. Exactly. Right? So it's either that, yeah. or... Or a static universe. There are actually other, there are more than one poss other alternative. Yeah. It could be that there was a preceding universe that had a Big Bang in reverse called right. a Big Crunch. It could be that there are multiple universes that exist parallel to ours, mm -hmm. of which we're just one that has properties, features, and phenomena consistent with the existence of cosmologists and podcasts and people, right? So we wanna know, is our universe an accident? Yeah. Is it a fluctuation, a fluke? And using technology for the first time, we can confirm that. We could potentially reveal that our universe did in fact begin not only with a singularity, with a point of incomprehensible hellscape like energy, density, pressure, everything you could imagine, but it would also reveal the presence of what's called a multiverse. Just as Copernicus and Galileo showed that the Earth is just a planet, it's not the center of the universe, as people have thought for thousands of years, back to Aristotle and beyond, that the universe was centered on the Earth because that was the natural place for it to be. No, they disproved that. They conjectured in the case of Copernicus and proved in the sense of, of Galileo and eventually uh, Isaac Newton. No, but there's more than one planet there's more than one star, there's more than one galaxy, there's more than one cluster, there's more than one super cluster of galaxies. Why not? More than one universe. And in fact, concomitant with the singular origin of the universe comes the multiverse. So in other words, you almost cannot have a single singularity, a big bang, without having 
a multiverse. They're almost wedded at the hip. So the stakes are very high because that's very, in, you know, it's very incompatible with, say, biblical narratives or it's incompatible with a lot of philosophical uh, speculation that you could have parallel multiple universes. In fact, they may not be even distant from us, just like they may be in uh, very closely related to us or they may be us in the sense of what's called many worlds multiverse interpretation. So the stakes are very high. It's the most primitive thing. This is why I'm so interested and this is why I do what I do because to study where everything came from where potentially, as Stephen Hawking said, asking what came before the Big Bang is meaningless as asking what's north of the North Pole. He may have been wrong, surprisingly. <laughs> uh, he may have been wrong. No, it would be very interesting, I, asked, uh, I would say to ask God, if God exists, to say what happened on the Tuesday before the Big Bang. That may have an answer for the first time in history by technology that my colleagues, who are far smarter than I am, are helping to build via what's called the Simons Observatory, which is located, it's actually one of the, if not the highest altitude construction project in the world, building a massive telescope array, a $130 million project funded primarily by the Simons Foundation in Manhattan, New York. And this is to unravel what caused the bang. Was there a big banger? Or was it all a spontaneous fluke? And if it was a Big Bang, are there other universes parallel to ours in a sense? I think, you know, for me, it's one of the most exciting things to grapple with. When are we going to find out? <laughs> well, if you join my webinar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the, the challenging thing is that these things take time. We're almost done with construction. We have colleagues that are there right now in Chile. This is in the Atacama Desert, 5,200 meters above sea level, 17,000 feet above sea level. As I said, highest observatory in the world, highest construction project in the world higher than you know, the base station, permanent base station Mount Everest. Very challenging conditions. Uh, very low oxygen, extreme ultraviolet damage from the sun. Uh, but it does make, you know, uh, it's compared to going to Mars, it's like a cakewalk. So Elon is welcome to spend some time there. Active volcanoes next door to us. Um, and uh, it's a very uh, inhospitable place. We are delayed by the pandemic uh, a year and a half, two, three years, which costs money because you can't just say, well, I know you're going to get your PhD working in the Keating Laboratory. Come back in two and a half years when things are, you know. No, we couldn't do that, so we kept it going, cost more money, and luckily we've been able to see it through. So yes, we're, we're about to get what's called first light, when we'll get the first astronomical data later this calendar year, 2023, and then we should have results a, a year later. But what I always caution people is that we won't be able to say, definitively. We won't be able to say, yes, there was definitely a singularity. You could, however, say that there was no singularity. In other words, you can, um, in science, you have to be careful. Most people think it's like math. You can prove one plus one equals two. You can prove, you guys know this, that, uh, you know, sign is, is opposite over hypotenuse, right? Trigonometry, isn't that right? You guys know each yeah. Okay, you can prove those things mathematically. He's such an optimist. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it goes back to Euclid, uh, yeah. uh, right? So you can prove those, you can't prove something in physics. You yeah. can't prove that the, you know, the Big Bang, ha but you can rule out the other alternatives. And so therefore you can falsify things about uh, alternative models. So by discovering the pattern that we're searching for, we would not prove the singularity, but we'd falsify the alternatives, including some purported by Nobel laureate and friend of, of mine and your countryman, Sir Roger Penrose, who has a model that's a cyclical universe that cycles into and out of existence. So. I always say my job is to not prove theories, it's to kill theories, <laughs> prove them wrong. And I think that's where it's nice to kind of marry the, the theoretical with the experimental, and hopefully we un unveil new knowledge about the origin of the only story that had no precedent, perhaps. <laughs>